Have you ever wondered why Adolf Hitler, one of history's most notorious figures, harbored such deep hatred for the Jews? In the early 20th century, a dark cloud loomed over Germany, a cloud that would soon engulf the world. The man at its center, Adolf Hitler, carried an ideology that shook the very foundations of human morality. This ideology was born out of a profound animosity towards Jews, an animosity that would lead to one of the most horrific atrocities known to mankind, the Holocaust. As we journey back in time, we find a complex web of historical, social, and personal factors that contributed to Hitler's rise to power. His anti-Semitic ideology wasn't just a personal vendetta, but a pervasive belief system that seeped into the political and societal fabric of Germany, ultimately leading to the extermination of six million innocent lives. So let's dive into the real reason Hitler hated Jews, a revelation that might shock the entire world. Hitler's hatred didn't just appear out of the blue, it was a result of a series of events and influences in his early life. Adolf Hitler's early life was a tumultuous journey, marked by hardship, struggle, and a significant amount of introspection. Born in Braunau am Inn, Austria in 1889, Hitler moved to Vienna at the age of 18, a city that would play a pivotal role in shaping his thoughts and ideologies. Vienna, at the turn of the 20th century, was a hotbed for anti-Semitism, a sentiment that was deeply ingrained in its society. Hitler, a struggling artist and a social outcast, was drawn into this web of hatred. He was exposed to a variety of anti-Semitic literature that was prevalent at the time, notably, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. This fabricated text which claimed a global conspiracy by Jews had a profound impact on Hitler, fueling his growing animosity towards the Jewish community. During this time he also came under the influence of key figures who propagated anti-Semitic ideologies. One such figure was Karl Luiger, the mayor of Vienna, who was known for his populist and anti-Semitic rhetoric. Luiger's political success and his ability to sway public opinion left an indelible mark on Hitler, shaping his future political strategies. Hitler's experiences in Vienna were further compounded by his personal failures. His unsuccessful attempts to gain admission into the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, coupled with his destitute living conditions, led him to blame his circumstances on the Jewish community. His resentment and anger found a convenient scapegoat in the form of anti-Semitism. These early life experiences, both personal and societal, were instrumental in shaping Hitler's worldview. The anti-Semitic literature, the influence of individuals like Luger, and the prevalent societal sentiment, all contributed to the formation of Hitler's anti-Semitic ideology. These early experiences were the seeds of Hitler's anti-Semitic ideology, which would later bloom into a devastating hatred. World War I was a turning point for Hitler, shaping his beliefs about Jews and their role in society. The Great War, as it was then known, was a crucible of fire and blood, churning out a new world order from its gruesome trenches. Hitler was a part of this chaos, serving as a corporal in the German army and experiencing firsthand the horrors of modern warfare. Germany's defeat in the war was a bitter pill for its people to swallow, and for Hitler, it was more than just a military loss. It was a betrayal. Not by the soldiers who had fought bravely on the front lines, but by the political and economic powers back home. This feeling of betrayal was further amplified by the harsh conditions of the Treaty of Versailles, which placed the blame for the war squarely on Germany's shoulders and imposed crippling reparations. It was in this atmosphere of resentment and humiliation that the Dolkstoss Legenda, or stab in the back myth, took root. This conspiracy theory, widely circulated and believed in post-war Germany, claimed that it was not military failure, but internal treachery that had led to Germany's defeat. And in the center of this treachery, according to the myth, were the Jews. They were accused of undermining the war effort through strikes, protests, and economic manipulation. For Hitler, this theory seemed to confirm his pre-existing anti-Semitic beliefs. It painted the Jews as traitors, as enemies not just of Germany, but of the Aryan race. It gave him a scapegoat for Germany's woes, a target for his anger, and a cause for his nascent political career. And so, in the aftermath of World War I, Hitler's hatred for Jews deepened and solidified. The war had taken much from him, from Germany, but it had also given him something. A burning conviction, a purpose, a mission. It was this mission that would drive him in the years to come, leading him down a path of destruction and genocide. It was from these ashes of defeat that Hitler's hatred for Jews truly ignited. As Hitler rose to power, 
his anti-Semitic beliefs became the cornerstone of his political agenda. This was a turning point in the 1930s, a period when Adolf Hitler, a man of meager beginnings and a failed artist, ascended to the pinnacle of German politics. Hitler's rise to power was not an overnight event, it was a calculated climb marked by a series of strategic moves. He capitalized on the discontent brewing in Germany post-World War I, manipulating the resentment of the Treaty of Versailles, the economic hardship, and the fear of communism. He promised the German people a return to national glory, and they listened. In 1920, Hitler became the leader of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or as we know it today, the Nazi Party. This was a fringe political group that Hitler transformed into a mass movement. He did this by rallying around the idea of racial purity, blaming Jews for all of Germany's problems. This propaganda was not only relentless but also highly effective. It tapped into centuries-old prejudices and stereotypes about Jews, portraying them as the enemy within, a threat to the German race. Hitler's speeches were filled with hate, demonizing Jews and blaming them for Germany's decline. He used this propaganda to create a common enemy, uniting the German people against the perceived Jewish threat. In 1935 the Nuremberg Laws were implemented, stripping Jews of their rights as citizens. It marked the start of state-sponsored persecution, a systematic campaign to marginalize and eventually exterminate the Jewish population. These laws were not just about discrimination, they were designed to isolate Jews from society, to dehumanize them. Jews were barred from marrying or having sexual relations with persons of German or related blood. They were also prohibited from flying the national flag. Hitler's rise to power marked the beginning of a dark chapter in human history. His use of anti-Semitic propaganda to gain political power and his implementation of the Nuremberg Laws were the first steps in an orchestrated plan that would lead to the Holocaust, one of the most horrific genocides in human history. Hitler's hatred culminated in the Holocaust, a systematic genocide that shocked the world. This event, which unfolded between 1933 and 1945, was a horrifying testament to the destructive power of bigotry and prejudice. The Holocaust was not an impulsive act of violence, but a meticulously planned and executed operation. The Nazis, under Hitler's rule, established concentration and extermination camps across Europe. These were not ordinary prisons, but places of unthinkable suffering and death. Auschwitz, Treblinka, Sobibor, these names echo in history as symbols of human cruelty at its most extreme. In these camps, Jews were subjected to inhumane conditions. They were stripped of their identities, forced into hard labor, subjected to medical experiments and ultimately, systematically murdered. The gas chambers, a chilling innovation of this mass murder, were used to kill thousands at a time. The scale of the Holocaust is staggering. Approximately 6 million Jews were murdered, constituting about two-thirds of the Jewish population in Europe. This genocide was not confined to any one region or country. From France to Ukraine, from Greece to Norway, the long arm of the Nazi regime reached out, bringing death and destruction. The world's reaction to the Holocaust was a complex mix of disbelief, horror, and regret. Initially, the international community was slow to comprehend the scale and severity of the genocide. But as the true extent of the atrocities became clear, the world was left in shock. The Holocaust was a stark reminder of the lethal consequences of unbridled hatred and prejudice. In its aftermath, the world vowed never again. The Holocaust led to the establishment of international laws against genocide and a renewed commitment to human rights. The survivors' stories continue to echo through time, a solemn reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink, and the resilience needed to rise again. The Holocaust remains a stark reminder of the lethal consequences of hatred. Let it also serve as a call to each one of us to stand against prejudice and bigotry in all its forms, and to strive for a world where such atrocities are relegated to the pages of history, never to be repeated. So, why did Hitler hate Jews? It was a complex interplay of personal experiences, societal influences, and political ambitions. We've traveled through Hitler's early life, examining critical influences that shaped his views. His experiences during World War I further cemented his prejudices, and his rise to power provided the platform to enact his sinister ideologies. The Holocaust, a tragic result of Hitler's hatred, served as a dark chapter in human history. It's a stark reminder of the catastrophic consequences when hatred, prejudice and power unite. It's crucial to remember that history isn't just a story of the past, it's a guide, a cautionary tale. 
Knowing our history is vital in preventing such atrocities from recurring. Understanding Hitler's hatred towards Jews isn't about justifying or empathizing with him, it's about learning, acknowledging, and ensuring we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. A single man's hatred led to one of the most horrific events in human history. Let this serve as a reminder of the importance of tolerance and understanding in our world today.